Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 6, Transaction Management, part 3. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the serializability schedule, serial and non-serial schedule, non-conflict serializability, and also draw the precedence graph. Objective of a concurrency control protocol is to schedule transactions in such a way as to avoid any interference. If we let multiple users to update the same data at the same time, it could lead to the problems that we have identified in the previous lesson. But if we ask them to run the transaction serially one after another, it limits the degree of concurrency in our system and defeat the purpose of multi-user database. Hence, the concept of serializability is considered as a means of helping to identify those executions of transactions that are guaranteed to ensure consistency. To represent transaction in a database, we use a schedule. Schedule is a sequence of reads or writes by a set of concurrent transactions. There are two types of schedule. The first one is serial schedule where operations of each transaction are executed consecutively without any interleave operations from other transactions. The second one is non-serial schedule. It is a schedule where operations from set of concurrent transactions are interleaved. For example here, the first schedule is a non-serial schedule because the second transaction can start before the first one is finished. The second one is, is also the same. If you take a look, the second transaction starts before the first transaction finish. The third one is a serial schedule because after the first transaction finished, then the second transaction can start. The objective of serializability is to find non-serial schedule that allow transactions to execute concurrently without interfering with one another. In other words, we want to find non-serial schedules that are equivalent to some serial schedule interleave but not interfere. Such a schedule is called serializable. In serializability, ordering of read or writes is important. If two transactions only read a data item, they do not conflict and order is not important. If two transactions either read or write completely separate data items, they do not conflict and order is not important. However, if one transaction writes a data item and another reads or writes same data item, order of execution is important. Under the constraint write rule, that is, a transaction updates a data item based on its all value, which is first read by the transaction, a precedence graph can be produced to test for conflict serializability. Precedence graph will have a node. This node will be connected by directed edge. How can you get the directed edge? If you have ti to tj directed edge, if tj reads the value of an item written by ti. A directed edge ti to tj, if tj writes a value into an item after it has been read by ti. And the third one, you can have a directed edge from ti to tj, if tj writes a value into an item after it has been written by ti. In simpler words, if you have two different transactions that has read to write, write to read, or write to write to the same data item, then directed edge can be constructed. These are the steps to draw precedence graph. First, understand the notation. R1Z means transaction 1, read data item, Z. If it's right, it will be W. Then identify how many transactions in schedule and draw the transaction table and its data. Let's take a look. The first step to draw the precedence graph, we need to identify how many transactions uh, does this schedule have. The first one, take a look, one, two, three, and we don't have any other unique transaction here. So it means you can start uh draw your transaction schedule first okay so we have t1 t2 and t3 so we will have these three transaction okay so let's put uh, the transaction one by one into the schedule if we take a look here r1 z what does it mean transaction one read z 
transaction 1 read z then r2y transaction 2 read y w2y transaction 2 write y r3y transaction 3 read y r1x transaction 1 read x w1x transaction 1 write x this one w1z transaction 1 write z w3y transaction 3 write y r2x transaction 2 read x okay we have a lot of things here r1y transaction 1 read y w1y transaction 1 write y w2x transaction 2 write x r3w transaction 3 read w w3w transaction 3 write w okay so after we have got this one then let's draw the node uh, for our precedence graph so if we take a look we have three transactions mean, means we have t1 t2 and t3 so we have these three nodes okay so how to get the directed edge if we take a look we have to we have the the rules of write to read read to write and another one is write to write so means it has to be from one transaction to another transaction okay so it has to be from uh, top to the bottom okay so if you take a look let's take a look on the first one read z so if you take a look read z we need to take a look on different transactions since read z is in transaction one we will take a look at transaction two is there any z data item no okay then we pass take a look at transaction three is there any z data item no also so it means here is done let's take a look at the second one read y since read y is in transaction two we will take a look at transaction one and three take a look at one first is there any is there any y yes however read to read there's no uh there's no rules there's no directed h over here however if we take a look on write y okay we have another one right y so means from read y we have the directed h from t2 to t1 on y so it means 2 to 1 on y okay then we take a look at transaction 3 now we have finished with one take a look at transaction 3 is there any y yes but this is read to read read to read no um this one read to read there's no directed h however we have read to right over here on y so means from transaction 2 there's a directed h to transaction 3 on y okay so is there any other y no more okay so now let's go uh, number 2 is finished let's go to line number 3 right y so this is transaction 2 we take a look at transaction 1 is there any y yes right to read here so t2 to t1 we already have t2 to t1 on y so let it be then we have another one right to right right to right also will have a directed edge t2 to t1 on y so we have finished also okay on t1 how about on the second one t2 to t3 on y we already have it here so let it be another one t2 to ty here we already also have sorry t2 to t3 on y we also have it okay so is there any other y no more Okay, so now we have finished with this one. Let's move on to this read y. Okay, on T3. Okay, so since we are in transaction 3, we take a look at transaction 2 and transaction 1 after this, after this transaction. Okay, so after this transaction, is there any y on, on transaction 2? No more. For this one, what we have? Yes, we have T3 to T1. Oh, sorry this is read to read we can uh, sorry we cannot have it T, but however we have read to this one read to right take a look read to right we have a we have a uh, directed edge okay so by that we have from t3 to t1 on y t3 to t1 
exactly 1 on y. Is there any other y here? No more. So we can pass this one. Let's move on to this read x. Okay, it is in transaction 1. We will take a look at transaction 2 and 3. Okay, read 2, read no more. Uh, sorry, no, no directed edge. However, we have read 2 right over here. Okay, so what does it mean? From transaction 1 to transaction 3 on x. Sorry, uh, transaction 1 to transaction 2 on x. 1 to 2 on x over here. Okay, so is there any other x here? No more. Is there any other x after this read x? No more. Okay, so means we pass this one. Then, let's take a look at this right x. Is there any x on T2? Yes. However, we already have. Okay, we already have from T1 to T2 on x. We have this one already. Okay, then any other x? Right to right. Same goes, we already have this one from T1 to T2 on x. Okay, let's take a look at T3. Is there any x? No x. Okay, after this right x, there's no more x. So, we can finish with this one. Take a look at right z. Now we are here. Since this is T1, we take a look at T2 and T3. Because it cannot go to this part. Okay, you cannot go uh, to your self-directed edge. So this is wrong. We can only go to another transaction. Now write Z, take a look at T2. Is there any Z? No Z. Okay, is there any Z? No Z. Okay, same goes with T3. Is there any Z? No Z. So we finish with this one. Now go to write Y. Is there any any y on on transition two no on transition one yes we have so y right y to read y right y to right y so it means from t3 to t1 on on y we already have it okay so let it be so now we have finished with transaction three on the right right, right y over here okay so let's move on to read x over here okay is there any other x on t1 no more Okay, is there any other x on uh, t3? No more. So we have finished with this one. Same goes with this one. Uh, the next one, read, uh, read y. Okay, read y. Is there any y on t2? No more. Is there any y on t3? No more. So okay, so we finish with this one. How about right y? Is there any y? No. Is there any y on t3? Also no. So we finish with right y. Take a look at this right x. Is there any x on t1? No more. Is there any x on t3 no more okay so we finish with this one take a look at read, read w there's no other transaction after read w on the other transaction t1 don't have t2 also don't have then we finish same goes with the last one there's no other transaction after that so we finish okay so by right this is the precedence graph that we have so this is our precedence graph so if we take a look here can you identify is there any cycle in the in this graph okay if you take a look we have from t1 to t2 and t2 to t1 so this is a cycle okay even though it is on different items this is why this x however this piece of this graph contain cycle so if you take a look there's a cycle in the piston graph okay there's a cycle so when there's a cycle it is what we call as non-conflict serializable okay non-conflict serializable so by right you need to conclude that there's a cycle hence it is non-conflict serializable so this is something that we don't want okay this is something that we don't want okay we want a precedent graph that has no cycle so if you take a look if if there's no cycle if there's no cycle, hence we can say it is a conflict serializable. Okay, so this is something that we want. We don't want something that has a cycle in the precedence graph. Okay, so that's all. So I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next part. Thank you.